Good morning, guys. Welcome to another week. Here we are, Monday, January 11th, sticking with science. And we're going to be on page 222 here today. And, well, let's get to it. We're going to be talking about tornadoes here. And just like hurricanes, tornadoes aren't really something we have a lot in Arizona. And just like last week, we started with a similar question about hurricanes. What do hurricanes need to form? We're going to be talking about the same thing about tornadoes. Because as you see here, conditions have to be right. Tornadoes can't just pop out of nowhere, just like hurricanes can't just pop out of nowhere. In fact, you know that you can't just look outside out of your house and say, oh, look, a hurricane's forming. No one's going to believe you because hurricanes need very specific conditions to form. Just like your your mom, your daddy, your uncle, your auntie put in fuel into your car, if it doesn't have fuel, it's not going to run. It needs that correct fuel to run. The well, same with hurricanes and same with tornadoes. Hurricanes, as we learned last week, have to have to have to have the right ingredients and that correct ingredient for the most part is warm water warm ocean water and not just some warm water lots and lots and lots of warm water i know talcali lake and san carlos lake are nice and warm and we got warm weather here but it's not even close to the amount of warm water that a hurricane needs in order to form. The conditions are right for hurricanes to form over warm oceans, which we have in the Atlantic Ocean, close to the equator. I'm talking like the Gulf of Mexico and, and there. That warm, moist water feeds the, the clouds, and you have those winds coming and swirling winds and all those have to be there in order for a hurricane to form. If you have swirling winds going over the cold Arctic Ocean, it's not going to form a hurricane because it doesn't have the warm ocean water. Well, enough about hurricanes. We went through that last week, right? Tornadoes, though, my point is you need the same thing, meaning conditions have to be right. Now, tornadoes don't need warm ocean water, but the conditions have to be right for a tornado to form, and that's what we're going to learn today. I'm going to be showing you a video. I hope I hope it doesn't make you dizzy going back and forth, but I'm going to a video that kind of explains this. And while we're watching the video, yes, yes, I want you to look at the sky, okay? There's a lot going on. But I also want you to look at the ground. I want you to look at the land, please. I, I want you to focus on the land to understand, you know, what do you consistently see with the land? Is it hilly, mountainous, flat? Um, focus on that as we go through this here. I, I'm going to kind of give a little bit of a spoiler alert as you see these different pictures. In the United States, on average, every year there's about 800 tornadoes. This funnel cloud down. Uh, and yes, it has happened in all 50 states. So it has happened in Arizona, but generally the conditions aren't right in Arizona. You have to have very specific ingredients for this tornado to form. And yes, of course, it's severe weather. But again, take a look at all the ground that you see. Here's a good example. Does it look like Arizona? Not really at all. Arizona, we have mesas and we have mountains and we have hills. Tornadoes generally like flat ground and lots of it. Usually it starts with just a sunny day here and then the winds start picking up and, and here's a good picture here I want to show you. Okay, uh, you might notice uh, this is Mexico right here. Here's California and here's Arizona. Here is the country of Canada. You might recognize the Great Lakes here. There's Michigan, the state of Wisconsin and something like that. So tornadoes generally form in the springtime and early summertime. And if you know about the weather in springtime, early summertime, we have colder winters, sure, but they're still warm compared to the rest of the United States, right? I know it might get the wood stove going at night, but we still have 60, 70 degrees. And in springtime, those temperatures are starting to get up to 80 degrees, right? Beautiful weather here. But up in the upper Midwest and Canada, they still are having snow. Man, we had snowstorms on Easter when I went to college and high school up here. 
lots of snow all the way through April, lots of years. So while Arizona and California and Mexico are having nice warm 80 degree days, you might remember from our weather unit that weather generally goes from the west and travels across the country to the east. So what type of weather is coming this way? Warm weather. And the same thing's happening here, but in Canada, it's coming from the west to the east. And what kind of weather? Cold weather. Now, going back to our unit before Christmas, we learned that when a warm front and a cold front meet, warm air always rises, right? And when the cold front comes underneath, that's generally when it's raining or storming or where those fronts meet. You might see that coming when you have the cirrus clouds, right? We all learned this before Christmas because that warm air is rising. It's literally taking the clouds and making them almost look like you have paint and you kind of spread it with the brush. The, those cirrus clouds look like a, a horse tail is spread out across because the warm air is rising and the cold air is coming, right? Uh, well, this is what's happening in spring and summer, but under extreme conditions meaning you got nice warm air coming from good old arizona and you got this freezing cold air coming from canada and it meets right here in the middle of the of the uh what we call the great plain states i know we haven't gone through these states yet in social studies but this is the states of like oklahoma kansas south dakota things like that there's a huge swath of land here where tornadoes generally come. And if you remember way back when in our science unit talk about ecosystems, this, this is the grassland area. Are there trees? Yes, but not many. It's mostly just long, flat areas of land full of grass. That's why they call it grassland. So lots of great farmland, lots of great areas where we get a lot of wheat and corn uh, and, and lots of farms and cattle and things like that but this is the area in spring and summer where warm air and cold air meet and again just like you have a fire and the chimney goes up the warm air rises the cold air comes and where those meet oh man that comes a storm when it's really warm air meaning really cold air that's when they have what's called a supercell and where those meet is where is where the big storms really come and if it has those winds that are swirling up when the warm air is rising then it can literally have a cloud come down the ground and that's what a tornado is um, and that's why tornadoes form that's why in Arizona it doesn't generally happen tornadoes don't like hilly and mountainous areas they like generally flat land. It's just easier for the weather systems to meet. I'm not saying that tornadoes is out mountains. I'm not going there. I just mean that the warm air and cold air meet a lot easier over flat land than mountainous areas. And we generally have warmer weather. Now, yes, we do have cold fronts and warm fronts meet over Arizona, but it's not as extreme as we have here where we got 80 degree warm fronts meeting 20 degree cold fronts. Uh, that's just extreme meeting there that forms tornadoes. So check out a couple more pictures. And yes, it is uh, pretty incredibly strong supercells that meet right here. It's just huge storms. And again, when these fronts meet storms, and if they have those swirling winds coming, it literally, those winds actually just drag the cloud down. And that's where some massive, massive destruction can happen. So, yes, it is aw aw uh, awesome, inspiring, uh, you know, impressive weather. But we also got to understand that tornadoes can be very dangerous and cause lots of destruction because if those conditions are right and you have the strong storms meeting with that strong funnel cloud that comes down with the swirling winds, those winds are so powerful they just knock over cars and houses and things so here's what's happening you see how the warm air is rising right warm air goes up the cold front comes underneath and if those winds are right where they're coming they literally are swirling 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 and it gets so strong that it actually pulls a funnel cloud down which they're going to show you right here and this funnel cloud that's coming is so strong and powerful that uh again it, it literally just knocks over houses and 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 things like that and 
you can't defend against it you can't you can't do anything besides try to look for some safety and so those are the conditions it needs warm front meeting a cold front and then it got to have those wind winds that has the funnel cloud reaching and that's where the destruction happens you're going to sound here that a tornado went through and i mean there's no there's nothing standing no no houses no cars standing because it just rips right through it and it doesn't have again you can't defend against it soon enough it'll show that uh, there's there's a picture of the town that that uh, we can of course pray for that hopefully everybody's okay and it's, again there's a lot of destruction there but um that's the part of the video i want to to show ending a bit of the well come on ending a little bit of the lesson here if i can actually get to it there we go. So, so learning about where the conditions have to be right. It's got to have the warm front meeting the, meeting the cold front. And it's got to have those swirling winds. A lot like a hurricane. But hurricanes, remember, form over water. Tornadoes don't. Now, tornadoes can happen over water. Those are called water spouts. However, however most form over land. Why is this called Tornado Alley in our country? Because we have the warm air coming from here and the cold air coming from here. And when there's extreme warm air and extreme cold air, that's when those superstorms or what we call supercells uh, form. And, and again, you add in those swirling winds and man, it can cause a lot of destruction. Here's a couple more pictures of tornadoes that I got from the internet. Um, powerful, powerful storms. Um, they do happen frequently in those states where they have either tornado watches or tornado warnings where they're saying, hey, these conditions are getting right for tornadoes to come. And, a, and But a tornado warning is when they actually spot a tornado. I've actually never seen one, but I have seen cities and towns where, they've, where a tornado has gone through that, uh, man, just really rips through and destroys a lot. Here's your assignment for today. If you look on page 22, I'm sorry, it should be page 222. I'm sorry about that. Page 222. So again, here, page 222. 222, draw a color and label the black box on the left side in your science book to learn how tornadoes form. I actually want you to draw the three stages. And that's actually uh, right here, just so you know what I'm talking about. Again, page 222, this black box right here. Okay. It's these three things that are needed in order for a tornado to form. It cannot happen unless these three things happen, starting here, then here, then here. So yes, it is essentially copying, but I want you just to learn how tornadoes form. I want you to draw and color this picture, this picture, and this picture, and then label it, which means write down this. Uh, again, the, just to get you to understand how exactly tornadoes form because uh, the rest of this week we're going to be talking about tornadoes if you don't have this down really no sense in it so this is your assignment draw color and label this black box basically take it from this page and put it on your sheet of paper uh, and that's your assignment for today guys hey lord's blessings to you as you praise your savior today